This video is about Music Creek Confluence, a project creating a California wilderness preserve as a nonprofit. Twenty years ago, a music camp in the Sierra faced the chance they may have to move from the land they'd used for generations. As a backup, they bought the undeveloped acreage at Music Creek, which happened already to have an appropriate name by sheer coincidence. Though once inhabited by Mono people, this land at the edge of the resort town of Shaver Lake was untouched for generations. It had become wild and densely overgrown, as had the national forest beside it. Under the camp's ownership, a group of musicians and organizers obtained more than $400,000 in state and federal grants and used that to return the land to the safer and healthier conditions that predominated hundreds of years ago when the local Mono tribal residents cared for it. This heavy work went on for years, mostly in effort of reducing fuel load and fire risk, but also doing a land management plan, archaeological assessments, and species inventory. The result of the grant-funded work for the Music Creek land was hailed by Cal Fire as an example to all in the region. Some in our group have been putting love and care into this place for two decades. Fast forward to last year, when the music camp learned they would not have to move. As a result, they decided they wished to sell the land at Music Creek. A nonprofit organization, Music Creek Confluence, now has a chance to buy Music Creek. Many in that group know the land intimately already from years of careful and sweaty efforts, mulching, surveying, camping, meeting neighbors, and observing. We're thrilled to have this singular opportunity to buy this unique acreage and at a good price, then enact legal protections for future generations. As the earth faces many symptoms of biological collapse, we intend to make Music Creek a haven for environmental education and cultural celebration. We invite you to be part of the project. Our first step, now underway, is purchasing one very special piece of land, totaling 134 acres. There we'll create an educational center for ecology, culture, and multi-generational organizing. In our video tour, we showed you around the Music Creek land. This video is in the form of frequently asked questions covering subjects our supporters have been curious about. Since our purposes are to protect this land and to learn from nature, a fully informative outreach feels more appropriate than the usual gimmicky methods so often employed. We do hope you will be interested in supporting the project, especially now as we approach our only chance make or break escrow deadline coming up fast in November 2019. The FAQs are divided into categories. Where is the property? It's about 30 miles south of Yosemite. It's above the really hot lowlands of the low foothills, and it's below the places that get really cold and icy winters. If you want to see more about the location, including the zoom in Google Earth fancy stuff that I figured out how to do for that, then you can see that in the video that is on the CrowdRise site. Will Music Creek be accessible to the public? We will have cultural events such as music campouts, school groups. Um, we're looking at organizations that it might be good to collaborate with for educational works on the land. And we are uh, putting together a variety of things for the people who live in the immediate community to have some access to the place as well. What about fire danger? Well, the people who lived here for thousands of years had a steady seasonal relationship with the land, and fire was a consistent and essential part of their routine living here. They still do use fire, and interestingly, uh, I just recently learned that the fire that the Native Americans in California used about once every three or four years would keep the fungus down to the point where the acorns were usable as food. And now with so many of the traditional fire rituals having been stopped or reduced, it's much, much harder to find acorns that are edible and, or at least that are culinary. 
I thought that part was really interesting. As far as wildfires, because of the fact that we've done a huge amount of clearing, there's a much better setup for any fire that does come through, and of course fires eventually do come through any place you name. So that means it'll come through in a patchwork and it'll have and it'll fit into the ecology of the area rather than destroying with extra hot flame everything in its path. What will Music Creek Confluence do with the land? We're planning to make it some kind of a retreat at the same time as most of the land will stay undeveloped forever and the part that will be developed will be developed very gently perhaps with some tent platforms or camping areas, yurts and so on, we'll have to decide how to keep that as gentle as possible using our best sense of the health of the land but we'll also have some guidance from the, uh, the legal strictures that will be put on the land for in perpetuity. What's your role in this project, Joel? I was a participant at the music camp and decided to get involved with Music Creek a couple of decades ago, but more recently I set up the, um, I guess you'd call it the spin-off nonprofit, and now I'm working with the group of people that's been involved and new people that are involved, so I'm doing fundraising and recruiting new interested people to be involved in this project. We're all volunteers. What has donor support been like so far? So far, as of Halloween, 21 people gave more than $500. 55 people gave between $100 and $500, and 51 people gave under $100. We also have a few people who are giving us no interest loans, and the last portion that we need to make up during the last few weeks of the campaign can be in loans or in donations. What happens if the project doesn't raise enough by the mid-November escrow deadline? Well, it seems this close to the deadline that it would be hard to raise enough in donations to cover everything. So we've already gone to the plan of using loans as a portion of the final payment for escrow to get the deed. However, let's say things go completely awry and for some reason we simply don't have the money in the bank account in time for the final escrow payment. Well, I can give you more details about that if you contact me and need to know those sorts of details, but suffice to say that the money is legally required to go to various nonprofits that we would choose at that time, but we would stick with the music camp that owns it now and some other land trust projects. That, of course, is very hypothetical because we will not allow it to happen. We're sure we can get loans of some sort. Now, getting loans of the right mix, the people who are interested in getting loans and haven't committed yet have expressed their interest in having the loans be from multiple sources, which I completely understand. What privileges does supporting it get me? Since we're a nonprofit organization, you'll get a tax write-off if you need one, and you also get a tax benefit if you're a lender for the interest that you're foregoing. We don't have a system of paying for memberships, although we intend to implement a system where there's a pay what you want for memberships at some point. Your main option for getting something out of this is the pleasure of seeing this place preserved for the long term. If that doesn't seem pleasurable to you, then I'm surprised you've gotten this far in the video. But if you want something specific to happen because of a very large donation, well, we could name a rock after you. Maybe a waterfall. <laughs> we actually haven't agreed to do that, but hey, it's always worth asking. When you reach your total uh, goal on the CrowdRise website, then what happens? Once we get to the goal on the website, that just means that we have the money in the bank for the payment, but then we have to continue raising money to pay back the loans that are a portion of that payment. So we'll continue doing fundraising, but we can also begin setting up with the Sequoia Riverlands Trust and others who have offered help to us, setting up the conservation easement, getting grants, getting programs going, doing a more in-depth survey of the ecosystem, 
and putting together all season access to the land for whatever studies, whatever retreats, and so on. So there's plenty to do. What's the loan contract like? One of the people who set up a loan with us was telling us how glad he was to see something that didn't have much, that was completely free of lawyerese. There's a section with the specifics for the interest donated, the time paying it back, and the promissory note, and then of course there are the signatures of the representative for Music Creek Confluence. In most cases that's me as the acting secretary of the board, and for you if you're a lender. How will Music Creek Confluence get the money to pay lenders back? We have lots of sources that I've already mentioned that we'll be able to tap into once we have the deed in our hands. But another aspect of repaying loans is that we'll be able to make some income if we run programs that participants pay for. We're not sure when that will begin, but and, and therefore we're not depending on that, but we have multiple other sources, including people who are interested in donating but aren't ready to donate in the next few weeks before the deadline of the escrow. What can I do besides financial support? We want this to be available to a certain small number of carefully selected organizations as a camping retreat where people can learn about the environment at the same time as doing the retreats that you might do on your own anyway if you're into wilderness and camping. And we'll work out who to collaborate with as we go along. So if you have ideas about that, great, but if you have direct contact with those organizations or part of those organizations, even better.